OK. So as I said, uh, we have to, I wanted to write uh, uh, the uh, Lagrangian for the, uh, for the field, right? We wrote the Lagrangian for the interaction of the charged particle with the electromagnetic field. But uh, of course, you can also write a Lagrangian for the fields themselves. So I write it here in this form. And, and then we discuss it. So you see, you take the square of the field strengths, F, uh, and uh, like this. Uh, that's a, you, you can compute this quantity. You see, it's the, it's the, it's the scalar, right? The Lagrangian is a scalar, because you see all the indices are saturated. And in fact, it's a nice exercise for you to compute this quantity. So you take two matrices, the two matrices that we define for the field strength tensor, F alpha beta, with the E field and the magnetic field. And you take the, this uh, sort of contraction of both, uh, of both uh, uh, and you will see this is uh, essentially is the, uh, 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 is the E field square minus the B field square, OK? So it's not the energy, it's uh, something, uh, uh, is the difference between these two density. But anyway, this is the Lagrange. Huh? Uh, so what I say, if you compute this quantity, you will find something like this, proportional to this uh, difference, OK? Um, so you see that is a, is a scalar. So uh, the only thing is that uh, what are the Lagrange, the Lagrange equations in this case? You see, we, I, as I said last time, we are used to, to think of uh, generalized coordinates. And what are the generalized coordinates in this, in this case? Well, they are not, uh, they, they become fields, right? So they are components uh, of the, uh, uh, of, if, if, if you have a field with many components, I don't know, components. But the point is that it's not a coordinate, it's a field now. So it's a variable with different values at different points in space, time, in fact. Okay. And similarly, uh, where we had the generalized, so these were the generalized coordinates, and now uh, we had the generalized velocity, this is replaced with the derivatives of these uh, fields. So of course, one should do this carefully, but uh, we don't have time. And uh, this is part of the dis different, probably, you, you, I don't know if, if you have advanced quantum mechanics, uh, maybe. Yeah, you do have, I saw next. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you do in that class, but maybe you will do something like this. But the point is that uh, you see that uh, we, we, we wrote the Lagrangian uh, was what? It uh, was a, a, a sum. If you had the Lagrangian many particles, was the sum of the Lagrangians of each particle, right? Uh, and this, uh, you understand that uh, because uh, it's not any longer, as I said, a numerable uh, number of, uh, uh, of coordinates, but you have an infinitely, an infinite larger number that is a continuum of, of, um, of so to speak, coordinates, uh, the Lagrangian becomes an integral of this Lagrangian that is a function of these fields, OK? So really, it's not the Lagrangian that you put here. It's called a density of Lagrangian. And so this, uh, I should be uh, more precise and say this is the, the Lagrangian density for the fields, OK? The, then the, when you integrate over the volume, you get uh, what you call the Lagrangian. So by analogy, where we had the Lagrange equations that uh, I hope you still remember, uh, uh, it was just uh, this, right? You see that the generalization, if you look at this is a sort of a translation table, is just going to be some uh, derivative, right? You see, it, it, it's in a way covariant because uh, you don't take just the, the time derivative. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the momenta. Okay. 
So for the case of the electromagnetic field, this, these field variables are going to be your four uh, potentials, okay? So in other words, uh, 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 this, this, this equation becomes, uh, I write it here, you, you take the Lagrangian density that I wrote, and you take a, a, a derivative, right, of, you take the derivative of Lagrangian with respect to the derivative of the vector potential. So, that is this part. Then you take this derivative and then you put that equal to the other derivative. And uh, how do you extract this? But you, you just have to rewrite, remember that uh, <coughs> F alpha beta is by definition uh, d alpha d beta minus d beta d alpha. So and then you have, well, actually, this is downstairs. And uh, this is upstairs. Minus 1 over c j alpha a alpha. So there, th here you have explicitly the dependence of your Lagrangian density on this variable, so that uh, if you do the computation, uh, you find that this is 1 minus 4 pi f alpha, uh, uh, f beta alpha, if you wrote uh, alpha beta. Uh, I'm sorry, beta alpha, then beta alpha, if you write here beta alpha. Notice that uh, it makes a difference if this index is, uh, is a lower index or upper index, uh, right? Uh, that's why you should be careful because of the Minkowski metric, with, uh, at least uh, for the zero component, that uh, if it goes up, it gets a minus, right? Because you lower and ri rise indices by using, so I, uh, what I'm saying, alpha is equal uh, uh, alpha beta, beta, right? So you lower the index by multiplying by the, ten, the Minkowski uh, tensor. But because this is not, this is always true, uh, but because in four dimensions, the, so you see that the zero component, right, would be this, therefore this is minus a zero. So that's why it's important to remember where these indices are. But okay, this is just a, a footnote. And this is 1 over 4 pi. This, this is a completely anti-symmetric tensor, right? So it's alpha beta. And what is the other part here? The other part is the, the, uh, the, uh, the derivative of the Lagrangian density with respect to, to the field that you are using as a, as a coordinate, a generalized coordinate that I said is the alpha, right? So again, by inspection, you see here is only momenta in a way, so you get only this, uh, this term here, minus 1 over c j alpha. And then you have to take this derivative here, right, d beta, so you take d beta here, so uh, you have d beta. So you see that uh, when you pull these two together, you indeed you, you get uh, 1 over 4 pi d beta, F uh, uh, actually I like it this form beta alpha equal uh, one over c uh, j alpha. That if you remember, if you take the four pi on the other side, this is exactly the first uh, set of Maxwell equations. Okay. So indeed, this is the Lagrangian that uh, you are supposed to, to use. And uh, therefore, this plus the Lagrangian that we wrote uh, on Wednesday is the Lagrangian for the electromagnetic field. Uh, um, uh, and then, then you can proceed as we did for mechanics uh, by writing all the, all the, uh, all the um, well, you write the equations and then you solve them then you are back to, um, in this, so the last uh, ingredient, if you wish, uh, and then I stop, uh, is the, uh, 
the what is called the uh, uh, energy momentum tensor. Okay, so uh, so you can define a tensor that uh, is uh, so you take the Lagrangian density for the electromagnetic so electromagnetic uh, quantity. So uh, we said is d uh, uh, d alpha a I guess lambda d beta a lambda minus eta alpha beta. This is the Minkowski tensor L. So what is this quantity? This is the energy momentum tensor uh, in space time for the electromagnetic field. So this is a, it, it contains the same information that you have, say, for a particle, is the, the generalization of the four momentum for the particle. And in fact, uh, uh, if you plug in the Lagrangian that we wrote, uh, that I wrote uh, one blackboard ago, you get 1 over 4 pi. Uh, f uh, mu alpha f nu alpha minus one four eta uh, 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 so here I should switch I should, should switch the, the indices really so alpha beta mu mu then alpha beta F nu nu, F nu nu. Okay, so alpha beta, alpha beta, alpha beta. And if you look now at the single component, for instance, the zero, zero, the time, time component of this object, so that means you replace in here zero, zero, and zero, zero, uh, you will see that uh, this quantity is uh, one over eight pi e square plus b square. So uh, take these components, do this computation. That's ag again a useful exercise if you have time. Uh, plus uh, a, a, a something that is just a derivative. So it's the, gra the, the divergence of phi e, so a, a weird object. But you see that when you take a, a so this is a energy momentum tensor density, you see. So if you integrate this quantity, you take the volume integral of the T00 component. So this is just a, uh, it's a total derivative in a way, right? So if you, uh, it gives no contribution when you do the, the integration. And, and, and here you have just 1 over A pi, the integral over the volume of this. But this you should recognize uh, that is the energy right because this was the, the this is the energy density so if i integrate over a certain volume i get the energy so this is the energy of the field so you see the time time components of this object is what we call the energy of the field and uh, probably uh, you can guess what this this is going to be the time space component of this object when you integrate over a, a volume again uh, is going to be 1 over 4 pi if you e cross b this integral. So this is like the momentum, right? It's the pointing vector. So this, just let me finish. Uh, so this uh, tensor uh, uh, puts together the same way the four momentum, the four momentum of a particle uh, uh, accounts in space-time for the energy and the three-dimensional moment of the particle. This is a sort of the uh, analogous concept for a field, uh, and you see that then the, the, the zero, zero component is the, the energy, the zero i component is this, and the ij components are those complicated things that I wrote when we were doing the, uh, this computation in three-dimensional space was the rest that I call everything that it was not this, where those parts that are called the stress tensor of the field, okay, that is the space-space component. Yes, what? Hello? <laughs> you, you, you end the power saving. <laughs> yes. What? This alpha beta mu nu mu nu mu nu 
mu nu, boy, anything you can call it. You, sa you saturate these indices, right? So this is the trace. Okay. Hmm? Well, it's the usual thing. If you have alpha, beta here, you must have alpha, beta, alpha, beta. The rest must be saturated, right? I mean, I, 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 repeated index means that this sum, right? Um, um, you, you see why this uh, Einstein convention is useful as you as you have uh, many indices. Okay, so this was uh, what I I didn't have time to finish uh, uh, on Wednesday, and so I think you have all the definitions for uh, discussing the uh, electromagnetic field uh, in space time. Okay. And so as a final exercise, uh, I want to rederive with you the, uh, this, uh, this, this is a sort of a central problem of electrodynamics that is the, the fields generated by, well, I want to solve Maxwell equations first. And then maybe if we have time, uh, uh, specialize this solution that is going to be manifestly covariant, okay, uh, for the case of the moving charge particle. So we, we rederive one more time the linear weaker potentials and maybe some uh, of the radiation. But uh, let's see how, uh, well, uh, probably I won't have time to do that. But so uh, we, we, dis we, 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 I just wrote there the, f the Maxwell equation, right, this. The other, the other set uh, is just a constraint, right? Uh, you understand? So the dynamical one is this, because this tells you how, for a given uh, charge, uh, density, and density uh, and current density, you can compute the, the, the electromagnetic fields. So instead of, of doing what we did uh, uh, a few weeks ago and uh, solve the Maxwell equations by components, uh, we, we, we may just solve those directly, right? Why not? We are in space time. And uh, the way to do it actually, in, instead of solving the, uh, we do the same that we did back then. So we introduce the, the four potential, right? And you remember that uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the equation satisfied by the four potential uh, is uh, uh, that, uh, that is this, okay? So this square uh, is the is the right. Is this is the alpha the alpha in four dimensions? So this thing is uh, is something like d two d x naught square. So the time component minus uh, uh, or all like this, depending on the on the signature. So this is the, um, the, how did, the Laplacian, and usually this uh, square is called the D'Alembertian. But uh, th this is uh, the same of this. Minus D here. No, I think. Uh, Uh, and in fact, this term here, you see, this is the sort of, you remember what? This is like the, the, the Lorentz gauge, right? Written in the covariant form. You remember the Lorentz gauge was this, uh, the gradient of phi plus the time derivative, but this uh, is all included in this uh, d alpha. So let's go to the, in the, to the Lorentz gauge so that this equation becomes the simpler one. That is, in fact, this. And actually, we want to solve uh, this equation. So it looks like uh, what we did uh, in, three, uh, in three dimensions uh, is just uh, uh, in four dimensions. But we proceed in the same way that uh, to solve this equation, I actually solve a simpler equation first, uh, that I look for the green function for this, uh, for this equation. And what is the green function? is uh, if, if you take this derivative at a certain point in space, x, uh, then the green function for this problem, right, 
is the, the one that when you apply this operator to the, your green function, you get the famous delta uh, Dirac delta function. And uh, it's just like we had before, but now it's the full four-dimensional delta function. So is uh, that that is a d x right uh, d uh, x vector minus x naught vector. Uh, sorry, x prime vector. Well, this is time, and this is the the three spatial coordinates. Okay, so this is the four-dimensional delta function or, or Dirac, uh, Dirac uh, uh, function. In fact, you see that it can only depend on this uh, difference, so you may as well introduce the four, uh, <coughs> the space-time coordinate Z, uh, Z alpha to be this difference here. So that saves us some, uh, some work. That means I can write this as dZ equal D4 Z. Now, if I do the Fourier transform, you remember, uh, or maybe not, because, uh, 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 well, I hope you still remember, we did the Fourier transform of this, but we did it in three dimensions, right? And then we left uh, the time component sort of around. But now uh, that uh, you learn all this uh, space-time formalism, uh, 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 you see that I can define my uh, four-dimensional four Fourier transform uh, to be, you take a 2 pi now to the fourth, and then you fu Fourier transform, so you go in the k space, right, by Fourier transforming, by Fourier transforming uh, the, um, the dz uh, e to the minus k z. Uh? No, I mean, uh, but, well, I mean, it, it's a convention, but uh, look, my convention is that you have as many 2 pi as dimensions of space. So we had three the other time, and we have four. But uh, of course, you can uh, do. So, uh, according to this definition, you see that the, uh, the, 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 that the, the delta function, right? You see the delta 4 of z, right, is just uh, 1 over 2 pi 4 d4 k e to the minus a k z dot. So I guess if this is the definition, then uh, I should do it like this, right, to be consistent. So this is the Fourier transform. So this is in the k space. This is in the space time. If this is definition, but you can. Notice that this k dot z is in four, 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 in four dimensions, okay? So you have uh, k dot uh, z dot. And I think uh, that here, to be consistent, I have to take the other metric, okay? You see, I took the other metric, is the, 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 the metric that is plus, minus, minus, minus. That's good uh, exercise to switch metric. Do you understand what I said, or it just? <laughs> I mean, this this thing is all. This is k alpha z alpha, right? So that means that is eta alpha beta, k alpha alpha zeta beta. So what what sign you get for the zero zero component? It depends uh, on your metric. So here I took this metric here. The one I said never to use. Okay. Just to be consistent, I immediately use it. But okay, but it's important that you understand. This is just as long as in your computation you stick to the same metric. It's like the normalization. I mean, you can put here one, but then you have to remember that you had this two pi. Anyway. Clearly, if I do the, the Fourier transform here, right, you see that this operator just gives me uh, uh, minus k dot k, right? So this is k dot equal to uh, 1, right? 
Now I do the full, I, I transform in Fourier space. Uh, as I told you uh, many times, uh, the idea of the Fourier transforms is to transform a differential equation into an algebraical equation. And this is exactly what happens here because the Fourier transform of the D'Alembertian is just uh, k dot k, right? Then here you put the d tilde and the Fourier transform of the delta function, you can read it off from here, it's just one. So you see immediately you have the solution, at least in Fourier space, that is 1 minus k squared. And exactly as we had, uh, 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 so this is no, no big uh, deal. Uh, but now, uh, as usual with this Fourier business, uh, what is a little bit uh, tricky is to come back into ordinary space from the k space. Because now you have to write what is your solution. I mean, your green function is going to be this dz that is going to be, uh, so you get 1, uh, 2 pi to the fourth minus, because you have a minus there, and then you have to do this integral. And uh, so I have to do this integral, but you see that, that there, is a, 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 there is a singularity in the integral, so it's not, you cannot do it right away. You have to be a little bit uh, careful. And the singularity I is where, so if you, so this is an integral, uh, you, you may, th uh, uh, let's do it, uh, so uh, if you draw the k not, uh, part of the integral, right? You see that uh, here, this is uh, k not k not square minus k vector square, right? And you see that uh, you have singularity uh, where this thing is equal to zero, right? So this quantity you can call it kappa square. So let's call kappa, let's call kappa the, 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 the value, the, the, the modulus of the vector k. So you see that uh, you have two poles, one here and one here, okay? So a plus the absolute value of the, of the space part of the vector k and the same as minus k. So if this is the, uh, when you do the, so here you have uh, dk naught times d3k. So when you do the integration over k naught, you hit these two two poles, okay? So this integral is minus one over two pi four to the fourth. Then you have the three-dimensional integration, uh, z, and then, you have this singular integral that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of the k naught of minus uh, so I guess right So this is this, I, I, I wrote down explicitly that integral. So you see, th this is okay. Then you, you have to do this k-naught integration. And so this is the integration in k-naught. You see you have two poles. So you have to give a prescription uh, about these poles, right? And uh, uh, so you have a contour here to do this integral. So you go to a complex space of the k-naught parameter. That's the way you do this integral. Uh, you see, you can have a contour like this. And, and also you can have a contour down here. And depending on which one you pick, what do you do? You close this, inter this path, right, up here or down here, that is uh, for z0 less than, z from z0 less than zero, you close it up here. Otherwise you have to pick uh, uh, the other contour. 
And you see, this is the usual thing that you take it large enough uh, in such a way to, in such a way to, um, that gives no contribution, right? And therefore, uh, the contribution of this uh, 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 integration path, uh, so let's take uh, this, uh, uh, let's take this, uh, the one, uh, the, this, uh, the lower one, okay? Uh, it's just uh, the sum of the residues of inside this path, right? You remember this from your uh, from Narayan class. So this integral here, uh, I write it as an integral over that uh, that circuit over d k naught, right? Of e minus i k naught zero, k naught minus k square. This is the sum. So um, minus 2 pi i, the, the residues of these things. But you see that the residues of this uh, in the two poles is, is what? Is one time e to the minus uh, and the other time e to the plus. Uh, so it's essentially is the sign, right? You remember this uh, is the sign of kappa z, uh, um, kappa z naught. You remember that the sign of uh, uh, of z is e to the i z minus e to so you get this. So the the entire integral by using and you see I, I took uh, this path here so I took uh, z not always larger than zero so I get outside a theta function for z not divided by two pi to the cube because a, a two pi gets absorbed here. Uh, the i, uh, uh, mm, I'm sorry, uh, 2 pi, yes, uh, uh, no, sorry, here, uh, it's 2 pi, sorry, I, I skip, so this is the sum of the residues, so when you do that, you get minus 2 pi, because the i goes in the definition of the sign, then they have a 1 over k sine of k z naught. So here I finally get uh, uh, the integral over the d3k, the vector part, that I still have to do, this one, e to the uh, i k z, now three-dimensional things, times the sine of kappa z naught over uh, kappa. Mm, very good. So I'm, I'm almost there. Actually, you can do part of this integral, you can do it uh, right away. And uh, you know, this function is uh, the one that is zero if the variable is negative and one uh, if it's positive, right? It's the theta function, the step, it's the step function, right? Um, so you can do the angular part of this integral and the result is that uh, you kill a, f a, a, a few factor of pi and two, then uh, you bring down, you, you see this is, the, you bring down the, 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 uh, the z, one z, and you are left with the sign again. So this, so kappa is the 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 absolute value of k. In fact, let's give a let's call now big R the absolute value of z because it will pop out. So let's call it R. So that's the result of the integration. You see, I've integrated everything except the, the lengths uh, of k that I still have to do. But even that integration is not uh, very complicated because by using trigonometry, you can replace these signs by the sum, right? Each of them for, is i, you see, you can combine them. You, I, you write the sign as e to the i uh, k r 
minus e to the i minus kr, then you multiply the two and you get uh, this. Right? And then it's easy to integrate these things, uh, right? Because uh, uh, for this bound, uh, this gives no contribution and this gives you just a delta function. So the end of the story is just you get uh, a, this uh, uh, theta z0 over, uh, so actually this, uh, there is a pi, right? This is a one dimensional, so this is pi over two the delta function of z0 minus r, minus uh, r. Okay, so my r looks a bit like a... So when you plug in here, you get uh, 2 pi, uh, 4 pi because of 2, 4 pi big r, and then just a delta function, right? This z0 minus r. So this was a sort of long... Uh, computation, but the end result is very simple because then you have that, that the, your delta, uh, your green function, okay, so let's put back Z was the difference between the point. So your, your green function is theta X naught minus X prime naught, right? If I, if I substitute for Z uh, the original value, divide by this 4 pi R, where R is the is the measure of the distance in space. And here you have x0 minus x prime 0 minus r. So very compact uh, result. This is the green function for, for, for this equation. And is recall, recall uh, the retarded. You remember these things about the retarded advance. And uh, this was because I took this path here right? I took this one. So this is the retard. If I had taken the other one, that is a good solution as well. This is the advanced one. But you see the advanced one uh, uh, was, uh, uh, up, it's called advanced because you see here I, I, I was integrating for z not greater than zero, right? So z, this is x minus x prime greater than zero. So you see this is for things that happen afterward. So that's why it's called retarded. So you, you, you determine what is happening from what happened before in the, in the, uh, in the light cone, before the, right? So in space time, if you are here, you deter, this is the light cone of this point. So this is uh, what, what happened here determine the, the fields in this point. This is the retarded solution. Because of the invariance between uh, time uh, inversion, uh, you could uh, have a, a good solution also if you use the advanced one in which you take everything that's happened here, you run it backward in time and you determine the solution here. But because of the way our brain works that uh, we have caus causality from the past, right, not from the future, uh, you always take the retarded solution. But mathematically, uh, as we already discussed, you could have taken uh, in fact, even half and half, you can take half retarded and half advanced, and that would be a good solution as well. But uh, let's stick to the retarded, so this is the green function. And because I have the green function, I can write the solution. Uh, uh, so the solution, the A alpha, let me call it, or A beta, is going to be what? It's going to be a generic solution uh, uh, right of the homogeneous equation, the one in which you put zero here. So whatever is there before you introduce the sources, maybe an electromagnetic wave passing by, plus the particular integral of this uh, 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 of this uh, uh, inhomogeneous equation that I write in terms of the of the of the so four pi c, the integral over d four x prime, the 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 retarded uh, uh, green function, so the so this uh, they call it R, the retarded x minus x prime g uh, alpha in x prime. So 
So that's the generic solution of the Maxwell equations now written in a manifestly covariant form in space-time. <coughs> so uh, I, you see it's a little simpler to work in, uh, sp directly in space-time if you compare to what we did uh, when we solved the Maxwell equation uh, in general uh, by uh, in, in three-dimensional space. At least uh, it seems to easier, simpler to me. Uh, uh, but uh, okay. Questions. So this is really all there is. But uh, we can uh, uh, specify some solutions, right? If we, if if we. So this is for a generic uh, charge and current uh, distribution. So. As usual, we can go to our favorite case, that is the single charge moving around the, the, uh, the sp space time. So what is J alpha for a single charge? Uh, it's something, so give a, a charge, uh, say an electron, or charge E. Uh, there is always this C around that uh, I'm not very... Then uh, you have to integrate over the, the, the path of this particle, you remember. So what, what is the, the, char the, the charge density? You integrate the velocity that is a four velocity of your particle, okay, over the path of this particle. And, uh, 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 and so uh, this, uh, this, this uh, uh, integral uh, is, uh, has a delta function x over the position, so R of tau is the, is the trajectory of your particle. So you, uh, uh, you, you put a delta function, so you put uh, this x to be the x. Uh, so if this is the R of tau, x uh, is here. So you put a delta function in order to identify that point, And you multiply the charge by the, car by the four velocity. Okay. So this R is a is a vector uh, with component say uh, C T. So let's t, let's take C equal to one R of T, right? Is the is the is the trajectory of the particle, but written in uh, space time. There is a C here, but I take, uh, I'm taking C equal to 1 to avoid. Uh, yes. I mean, there the, the, the should be a C here, and then uh, also you have a, well, of course, here you have C. So, OK, but I'm taking C equal to 1 to avoid too much editing in the final. <laughs> Okay. So you see that if you plug, uh, so you have your delta function right here. Now I plug uh, this j in here, and I can write the a alpha, the the solution. Let's take that uh, you don't have any incoming four vectors, so you just uh, have your sources, so you don't have the, the solution of the homogeneous equation, so you only have this. So if you take this, you plug in there, you see there are factors, now c is equal to 1, 4 pi. I think if I did it correct, you get the 2e, then you have this integral over the proper time of the particle, u alpha tau, this is just goes across. Then uh, you see you have uh, this series of, uh, well, you have the theta function, of course, this x 
minus x prime naught. Uh, but you see the, uh, you have also this delta, delta, so you have this delta function and this delta function. They play together so that here you should replace because of that, uh, of this delta function and, and the interplay there. You see x goes in there, so you get uh, x naught at uh, certain, I'll tell you in a second what this is. And then you have the three-dimensional things. Uh, square. So what is uh, uh, this, uh, you see, you have this, uh, this constraint. So you see, if this is time and this is space, and you have your trajectory, as I said, uh, right, and you are in point x here. So here's the charge moving, and here you have uh, your x point. You see, this is, a, it's a cone, it's a light cone right, because uh, this is the light cone for this point x uh, from here to there. So you get uh, that the only contribution to the A alpha field in here is the one produced by the particle at the retarded time, of course, uh, when the particle was here. So this is R tau, tau naught, say. This is the trajectory. Okay, that's exactly what we already knew from the previous computation, that uh, the field here is not, you see, this is the time t, but it's not uh, generated by here, but by the retarded position of the particle uh, when it was here, such that uh, the, 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 the influence, or the generation of this field runs along this uh, light-like uh, propagation at the speed of light. So there is only this, uh, okay. And uh, actually, you see, you can uh, even uh, you can even do this integral, right? If you remember the property of the of the um, of the theta of the delta function, right? And uh, if you do that, uh, you get uh, the final result. That is, so you have the charge, the velocity uh, there, and then u dot uh, x minus r time at the retarded time, if you do this integral. And so this is the four-dimensional form of, of the, Leonard, how do you write it? Potentials. And you can see that they go in what we computed in a three-dimensional space if you uh, well it, it requires a little bit of so you see for, for instance let, let's look at the at the zero components right you see this 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 distance here this u dot uh, x minus r of tau This is u not u not uh, x not minus r of tau not tau, right? Minus the vector part. And you see, you remember that uh, u alpha is equal to. Uh, um, uh, well, if it's equal to gamma C, so 1, or if you want to bet, put back C uh, and V, right? So if you, if you do that, uh, you see that this is equal to gamma. Um, let's, call, uh, let's call the, 
let's call r, big R, as I did before, the distance uh, uh, between uh, x and r at this time tau. This is on the light cone, so this is exactly equal to x naught minus r naught. So if I use this big R, this is gamma R, there is a C, but let's put it equal to 1, minus gamma V N R, where N is the vector, as usual, that points from the, from the po position of the particle to where you are computing the field. So if you put this inside here, you see that the, the zero component of this, that is what you call the the scalar potential of the linear vicar potential. So I take the zero component of this. So this is the zero component. So it's just uh, this uh, gamma C. Then the gamma simplifies. And I get just the charge divided by what? You collect this. You see 1 minus this V. There is this C. So it's a beta, really, right? N. And you collect at the retarded time. And this, if you remember, is what we derive for the linear vector potential for the case uh, uh, in the three-dimensional space. And similarly, you can write exactly the same things if you put the beta here, right? I think it's exactly the same. This is the, the vector potential. So you see it's much more compact and uh, I think uh, simpler in a way. Or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, it's more difficult. But it was not easy even in three dimensions, I think. So, well, at least here is all, uh, is, well, okay, anyway. <coughs> so what else? Well, of course, you can uh, compute directly from here the fields, the field strengths, the F alpha beta, but uh, OK, I think we are running out of energy. Uh, so, um, so maybe the last thing one wants to, uh, so let me skip this other parts because I, I see that we are tired. It's Friday. Uh, so what else I wanted to say? Just uh, maybe just the final words about the uh, the emitted power, right? When uh, this electron is accelerating, is uh, you remember the Larmor formula? Do you? What is it? OK, that's pretty good, yeah. So we derive this formula that for a, a charge accelerating, right, uh, the, 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 the power emitted by, by, by electromagnetic radiation was e squared chi, uh, e, so c equal 1, but uh, now I have it and the acceleration, right, square. Then if it was moving with the, uh, yeah, yeah, with the periodically, uh, you would get this, uh, the law. So what is the, uh, in a way, you can immediately generalize this to the relativistic uh, uh, limit, uh, I mean, the covariant generalization of this. Uh, because it has uh, some uh, features that are not there in the formula that we derived. That was a non-relativistic. So this is good if the electron is moving with speeds uh, much less than, uh, than C. What happens if this electron starts moving uh, at a speed that is comparable? Well, the, you have to generalize this uh, to the, uh, um, and is the usual thing. Uh, you have here uh, divide and multiply by m. So then, uh, you see, this becomes a P, right? Uh, so uh, you can take, uh, uh, so you have 
2 third e square m square c uh, to the cube, and then uh, you have a d p mu d tau d p mu d tau. That is the generalization of this time derivative. So I replace the time derivative with derivative with respect to the proper time. And uh, depending on the signature, you put a minus here or you don't put a minus there, depending on the fact that uh, you have that uh, p square is uh, 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 minus or plus, uh, okay, the, the signature of your So you see, it becomes a little more complicated because uh, you have two components here, because you have the vector part, right? The vector part, that is this, and then uh, you have the, uh, the time part. Or, to write it in a nicer way, So if you expand this expression here, let's write it here, I think you get this, uh, you see, because uh, um, E is equal to gamma mc square, right? And P is equal to gamma mv. So if you replace there, you get, uh, you collect a bunch of gammas from there and there, and the final result is this one. So let me just write the final. This is a result. So this, this is the, the power emitted by, by an electron moving with arbitrary velocity. This was derived by Lienard, the same of the potential, without Vicker. That, uh, they didn't work together. I mean, one was German, the other French. And uh, they just got the potentials at the same time, but then he derived this. Uh, uh, and uh, so, um, uh, so this is the generalization of the uh, uh, of the Larmor formula when the, the particle you see is moving so uh, at speeds comparable to the velocity uh, or the. Okay, now. You can, w w you can then uh, compute the electric field and the magnetic field and then the pointing vector. So I'm not going to do it because, uh, well, you find it in your textbook. And the only thing I want to say, so this is the power emitted. How is this power emitted? You remember that it has a characteristic uh, angular distribution. And this characteristic angular distribution uh, 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 is given by this formula. So uh, what I'm skipping here is to, to write the electric field from the, from the our potential. And then from the, pot from the, from the uh, electric field, you keep the radiation part, and then you write the pointing vector. If you do that, uh, you see that the power, uh, the angular distribution of the power emitted, this is the total power, right? This is, you see, is the, angular distribution of this uh, 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 emitted uh, uh, has this form here. I write, I just write the, the result so that we don't. This is the, 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 the norm, the unit vector between the, so this electron is moving in this direction, okay? And uh, this n is pointing where you are looking. So if, if there's some angle theta. Okay, and uh, so it's uh, something like this. Beta is V over C hmm? square 1 minus N dot B to the fifth. So what is interesting is that uh, if you introduce this angle, you see that you have this angular, the, here you have 1 minus uh, beta cosine of theta, right? 
and down upstairs you get the sine theta square, right, because of this. So in other words, uh, it has an interesting uh, distribution, right, that uh, depending on the value of beta, you remember that for small velocities we discovered that the radiation was all emitted in this direction here, right? But now you see that uh, if beta becomes, uh, uh, so this was for beta close to zero, for V much less. But for beta coming close to the speed of light, beta close to one, these two goes down, they go like this. So they tend to close toward the direction of the motion of your electron. So this is the synchrotron radiation of this electron and it tends to, to, to come close to the direction of motion as you come close to the, to the speed of light. Okay? Yes? Well, he, 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 close to one is very close to this direction. So if, if it goes very slowly, you don't have radiation in the same direction of the motion. Uh, on the other direction, it comes closer. So for instance, CERN, they accelerate it. You have a lot of synchrotron radiation in the, along the, 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 the pipeline. 